God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And bless be God's kingdom, now and Almighty God, to whose glory we celebrate the dedication of this house of prayer, we give you thanks for the fellowship of those who have worshiped in this place. And we pray that all who seek you here may find you and be filled with your joy and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Kings. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants who walk before you with all their heart the covenant that you kept for your servant, my father David, as you declared to him, you promised with your mouth and have this day fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, keep for your servant, my father David, that which you promised him, saying, there shall never fail you a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel if only your children look to their way to walk before me as you have walked before me. Therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you promised to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Even heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built. Have regard to your servant's prayer and his plea, O Lord my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you today, that your eyes may be open night and day towards this house, the place of which you said, my name shall be there that you may heed the prayer that your servant prays towards this place. Hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel, 
when they pray towards this place. Oh, here in heaven, your dwelling place, heed and forgive. The word of the Lord.
A reading from 1 Peter. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Oh, you were, one, oh, you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Then Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he cured them. But when the chief priest and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became angry and said to him, do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, yes, have you never read? Out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for your people. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It really is a delight and privilege to welcome you all to the Holy Hill, as Michael Wright so beautifully captured in that hymn composed for our bicentenary. And I must admit I'm very relieved that the good Lord chose to send rain today and not the last three days. <laughs> and we're in the dry and we can enjoy this moment together as we mark 200 years. So, there is an Episcopal bishop, <laughs> a Roman Catholic priest, and a mega church pastor. And they're going on an ecumenical fishing trip together. So there they are on this little lake, fishing away. And after some time, the Episcopal bishop gets up. She walks to the edge of the boat. She steps over the side of the boat and she walks across the water. And she decides to do a few exercises as she walks up towards her car. Moments later, the Roman Catholic priest says, actually, I just need to go and get something from my truck. So he gets up, walks to the edge of the boat, steps over the side, walks across the water, and starts going up towards his truck. The two of them, the Episcopal bishop and the Roman Catholic priest, converge at the top of the slope, looking down to the lake, they see the mega church pastor with his head in his hand saying, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And they watch him as he steps over the side of the boat and starts frailing around in the water. The Roman Catholic priest turns to the Episcopal bishop and says, do you think we should have told him about the line of rocks just underneath the surface <laughs> of the water? And the Episcopal bishop replies, what rocks? <laughs> mm. See, our orders are valid. <laughs> now, talking of bishops, I'm very conscious that I stand in the ambo today as your preacher because our beloved presiding bishop is recovering from surgery. Let me just say this. Bishop Michael Curry has been such a gift to this seminary. And not just this seminary, to, but to theological education, to the Episcopal Church, and to the whole Anglican Communion. And we are delighted 
that he is taking the space to recover us. We're looking forward to his visit on December the 17th and his presence at the lessons and carols service and the conferral of the Dean's Cross on Ms. Ellen Hawkins. Meanwhile, we are grateful for the witness that Bishop Curry provides and continue to pray for his full recovery. After we heard that news, we shared with the world that we were grateful that Archbishop Hossam Naoum would be our celebrant. However, as many of you learned yesterday from Archbishop Naoum, Israel-Palestine is facing a crisis unparalleled in recent history. And understandably, as a major faith leader, he needs to be present in Jerusalem. So as the present dean becomes your preacher, I'm deeply grateful that my predecessor was willing to be our celebrant. We are both pleased to do this work this day, although we wish the circumstances were different. But in our small way, we are the present and the past serving at the altar. Thank you, Martha Horn, for doing this. Our text today remind us of the holy nature of the work that we do at this seminary. King Solomon builds the temple and God takes up residence. Jesus teaches us that the temple is a house of prayer where the blind and the lame can be cured. And the epistle draws an analogy with the temple by suggesting that we, human beings, are the living stones that God wants to turn into a spiritual house. So from a physical temple being built to a physical temple being used for prayer and healing to this remarkable invitation by God to let us become the temple where God can reside. And this is the work of this institution. This is the work that we've been doing at Virginia Theological Seminary. This is a holy work where heaven and earth meet, where time and eternity coincide, where through us, God's presence can be felt in this hurting world. Now we have been doing this work for 200 years. And at this point, we must pause. Human sinfulness is a major part of our narrative, which we must not minimize, nor must we ignore, nor must we evade. Friends, let me say this gently, but history is too often written from a white perspective. And we make excuses. After all, we say, Everyone was doing it. It was inescapable. It was just an endemic part of the time. Friends, this is not right. As part of the historic bicentenary, the Board of Trustees has embarked on a program of reparations. We know that African Americans were treated cruelly and inhumanely. We know the labor of those in the past was not rewarded appropriately. During said slavery, it was nothing. And during Kim, Jim Crow, it was a fourth of what white employees obtained. Therefore, estates were deprived. And therefore, descendants were deprived. This was wrong. And in a very modest, small way, we started a program headed up by the Reverend Dr. Joseph Thompson and Ms. Ebony Davies to rectify that horrendous sin. 
Meeting with the descendants has been a significant part of my work in recent years. It has been a privilege to learn of their forebears who labored on this campus. Recently, Dr. Thompson and I met with Mary Owens, her father, her grandfather, and her great-grandfather had labored on this campus. And she told us about a visit to the campus during the Embracing Inclusivity weekend. On Saturday morning, she came to this chapel. And I'm grateful that Mary is letting me share this moment with you. Mary wrote to me as follows. On Saturday morning, I arrived at the chapel a little late, and as I entered the chapel, the minister was reading a passage from the prophet, prophet Zechariah. I thought of how beautiful that moment in chapel was, and how beautifully the weekend was going. I felt deeply connected to God and to my ancestors who worked on Virginia Theological Seminary. I asked myself, who prayed this moment into existence? Who prayed the beauty of these blessings on my life? The blessings of spending this weekend at Virginia Theological Seminary in honor of my grandfather and his father. The blessings of experiencing God in a deeply passionate way. I imagined my ancestors walking the grounds of VTS praying. Praying for future generations and now now I sit here in the blessings that they ask God for. Tears began to flow as I felt faith rise inside of me. I prayed the blessings forward onto my children and my grandchildren. Now at this point in the service, it just happened that the sequence hymn was the blessing by Elevation Worship, which is based on those, that passage in Numbers 6. The words were, the Lord bless you and keep you, May his favor be upon you, and then it goes on, and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. Mary goes on to write, I started to sob. I believed in that moment that I was carrying the prayers and the legacy of the Peters family forward. I understood that now I have a responsibility to yield to and to respond to God so that he can answer the prayers of my ancestors. I was overwhelmed by every scripture that was read, every song that was sung, and every word that was spoken. I began to cry so uncontrollably that I decided to leave the sanctuary and sit in the vestibule until I could steady myself. Mary Owens is in the chapel today. Today, we tell the complete story of the past. We especially honor those names that we have suppressed. But as Mary's words attest, their spirit and their prayers could never be truly snuffed out. They live yet on this campus, and we intend to honor them and to hear what they have to say to us today. It was Thurgood Marshall, the first African-American justice on the Supreme Court, who noted at the Constitution's bicentennial that it's not the text that was originally constructed that should be honored, but the journey that the text generated. The text that was originally written had, he explained, inherent defects, but the text had evolved. Quote, it's a living document, including the Bill of Rights and other amendments protecting individual freedoms and human rights. This is what should be recognized in the Constitution's bicentennial. I find this really helpful. Let us mark the journey of Virginia Theological Seminary, a journey of 200 years a journey of sin and grace, flaws and faithfulness. And it was Leo Twiggs, the artist, who yesterday in his presentation suggested that we should say sin and amazing grace. A journey that has not ended. We still have much further to go. 
It's a journey with partners. We're delighted in our close connection to the congregation that worships here, Emmanuel Church on the Hill, and with other partners around the globe, especially St. George's College in Jerusalem. On this journey, we must learn from the past. We work hard to make the present different, and we commit to a future where love and justice coincide. We now include seminarians who are women, some of whom become bishops. We include seminarians who are LGBTQ+. We have an affiliation with a sister seminary, the General Theological Seminary. And we have an amazing array of programs focused on those who are baptized in lifelong learning. Friends, let me conclude with this. This journey of ours needs to focus on Christ. Let Christ be our North Star. Let us attend to the eternal word, learn from it, and live into it. And let us allow God to turn us all into living stones that creates a beautiful temple where God can reside. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. In we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. In o Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, 
that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. for a moment. It really is a delight to have you all here in the chapel this morning. Thank you so much for joining us on this occasion. On behalf of the faculty and the Board of Trustees of Virginia Theological Seminary, it's a very warm welcome to each and every one of you, especially those of you who are watching the live stream. Uh, we're delighted that you're present for this moment to mark 200 years, and we prepare today for the next 200 years of service. I want to just stress that we're constantly grateful for the prayers and support of all of you. Our network of friends and alumni is what makes this place strong. Two quick announcements I want to just highlight. Given the rain, we've moved the brunch to the refectory. So although your bulletin instructs you to go to St. Martin's Deanery, you'll find the place empty. <laughs> That's not entirely true. There's a labradoodle, in fact, two labradoodles running around the place, but <laughs> they won't be in a position to provide brunch. <laughs> so please do come to the refectory for the brunch. And let me just stress, for those of you who are plan to catch a flight, which I fear will almost certainly be delayed because every flight on planet Earth has been delayed just at the minute. But nevertheless, there is a to-go option, which you must pick up. And then finally, you'll notice right inside the bulletin this, this morning, we did uh, stress that the, and this was always the plan, that the offertory today would go to the Diocese of Jerusalem. So please, I invite you, as you think a little bit about what you can give, to really make this a moment when we give and support our brother Hossam, uh, the Archbishop, and the ministry that he's seeking to do at this extraordinarily difficult time. Martha. O Lord our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things and by your will they were created and have their being.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our high priest, in whom we are built up as living stones of a holy temple, that we might offer before you a sacrifice of praise and prayer, which is holy and pleasing in your sight. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him in unity, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, Savior Jesus Christ. Fed us with spiritual food, his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and service to love, love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and remain with you always. peace to love and serve the Lord.